Welcome to the second week, and let's get started with some multiple linear regression with matrix math, now that you have that on, in your uh, tool belt. So first off, are you ready for this? Uh, make sure you can answer these questions. What is simple linear regression? How do we estimate the parameters in a simple linear regression? For that question, and I'm looking for the name of the, the cost function. Uh, maybe I didn't call it a cost function. The thing we minimize. Uh, also, what's a blue? So if you don't know all the answers to these questions, look for this uh, talk, Simple Linear Regression Introduction Without Matrix Algebra. So this would have been uh, last Wednesday. Likewise, can you invert a square matrix? How about a rectangular matrix? That one's a little trickier. And do you know what ranked efficient means? This is one of... Uh, my biggest uh, things that I want you to know is how to spot a ranked efficient ma matrix. So make sure you can do that. If you can't, go back to the matrix algebra lecture from Friday. Check that out. Okay, where were we? So our goal is to add more param parameters to our regression. So if you recall, before we just had a simple linear regression where the example I covered was predicting reaction time using simply age. If we want to add more regressors to the model, it becomes much easier to estimate our betas and the variance, don't forget the variance, sigma, if we use linear algebra. So that's what, why we had the linear algebra last time. So let's, uh, we're going to rewrite the regression. Before I was always showing yi, xi, etc. So now you'll see I have y1. I'm showing this equation for subject number one. So this is y1, this is their parameter value, x11 for parameter two, their value for parameter three, what their value is. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna stack this equation for each subject. So we have y2 and all the way up to yn. So now that I've stacked these, um, you can see that these could just be put into a vector. And we know from our matrix multiplication, um, just FYI, even if you can multiply just a vector by a matrix, that'll get you really far um, because that's all this is. There's a matrix with the X's in it and it's multiplied by a vector with the betas. So the same betas exist in all of these. What's different are the X's. And then the error term is added so we can just put those all together in a vector. So it would look like this. So if you do the matrix multiplication, remember you always go across the row of the first matrix, and in this case we only have one column, so we go down this column. So if you do that, you're going to get 1 times beta 1 plus beta, I'm sorry, beta naught plus beta 1 x11 plus beta 2 x21 plus beta 3 x31, which gives us back this first equation, and then you can repeat it for the rest. So this is this bottom expression is equivalent to this top expression. And one thing that I highly recommend doing, and I do this for almost every paper I read, especially since I made a mistake with matrix dimensions when I was writing one of my first papers, is I just scribble the dimensions of all the things under the matrices and make sure things work out. So this is an n by one vector, fine. Going over here, if I multiply an n by four matrix by a four by one vector, column vector, the result will be n by one. And then we have an n by one vector here. So that's good. We can only add an n by, n by one vector to another n by one vector, and this big thing turns into an n by one vector. And so everything matches. And part of the reason I like to do this, I'm not checking to see if they did it right, but often the dimensions help you remember or understand what this equation is doing. I can say, oh, okay, this is one thing for each subject. That's why there are n rows. And then we can just write that as a plain old matrix instead of putting writing out all the elements. Y equals x beta plus epsilon. Just remember x is a matrix and beta is a vector. So these design matrices, there are different ways to view them. Uh, one way is to just look at the actual numbers. So here's an example. 
And um, in, with imaging data, especially when we're doing our time series analysis, you often have to look at an image representation where darker equals a smaller number. So this is the same thing as here, just using an image rep representation. So this is great for looking at your fMRI time series uh, model. So here's an example. This is just from FSL. I'm pretty sure F uh, SPM does something similar for a block design. This is the regressor for the stimulus, and this is just the derivative of it. I'll talk more about that way on down the road, but we'll get there. Um, so this is more helpful than if I were to try to look at the numbers. Okay, so I don't want to forget the variance. That's always an important player in our regression. It's usually it's usually the troublemaker. If at the end of the day your your tests aren't significant, it's typically because your variance is too big. Um, well, or there's no effect. So the distribution of y can be described as a multivariate normal. So it's just a, I think of it as a bigger, it's a multi-dimension normal distribution. So the mean is now given by a vector, x beta, remember this is an n by one vector. And then the covariance matrix is a matrix. The covariance is a matrix. And in this case, it's sigma squared times an n by n identity which looks like this thing that I'm showing you on the bottom. So that's it. Now that we have linear regression under our belt, or not linear regression, we're getting there with that. Now that we have uh, linear algebra or matrix math under our belt, beta hat's really easy to derive. So we start with this equation y equals x beta, and I put a hat on it because I'm estimating the hat, and I drop the error just for now for the purposes of this illustration. Now x will always be a rectangular matrix. Your x must have more rows than columns. And the more rows, the bigger the difference between the number of rows and columns, the better off you are. In other words, you want more, far more subjects than parameters in your model. You want far more time points in your time series than regressors. Anyway, so we know that x itself is not invertible but let's assume it is full rank. So that's why I want you to be able to spot a full rank matrix or a rank deficient matrix, because in order to estimate the beta hat, we're gonna pre-multiply both sides by X transpose. If X is, has full column rank, I'm sorry, since it's a, a rectangular matrix, uh, full column rank, then X transpose X is invertible. So the inverse exists. So I then pre-multiply both sides by the inverse and I get this final equation, x transpose x inverse x transpose y. I swear I have dreams about this thing. I can't tell you how many times I've had to code this up. It's one of the uh, most used things, for me at least. So, so this is exactly the same as the least squares estimates that I covered in the um, simple linear regression, but much easier to understand and write code for. So thank you, linear algebra. We can use matrix math to estimate our sigma hat as well. You take the residual E, which is simply, it's y minus y hat, and y hat is just x times beta hat. So you take E, transpose it, multiply it by E. This is equivalent, write it down and uh, prove it to yourself. This is, let's get the dimensions right. So E is n by one, so E transpose will be one by n. So if I take E transpose E, I'm gonna get a single number and it's basically, it's just the sum of the squared residuals. So this is exactly the same as before. And then you divide by the degrees of freedom, which will be n minus p. n is the length of y, p is the length of beta. Number of subjects minus the number of parameters that were in your model. Some statistical properties, the expected value, remember that? It's basically the mean of our estimate. What's this estimate on average? It's actually the truth. So, um, you know, repeat your study enough times, it's going to hover around the truth. So that's great. We have an unbiased uh, estimator. Or, yeah. And the variance of beta hat follows this equation. So this is going to be, it's actually, you'll find I use variance and covariance kind of interchangeably. Um, if it's, if I do the variance of a vector, it's implied that I'm looking at a covariance. So this will be a P by P matrix multiplied by sigma squared. 
So the problem though is we don't know sigma squared. So I'm gonna get a little crazy with hats. I'm now gonna put a hat on the variance because I'm estimating the variance of my estimated parameter. And that just means I put a hat on sigma. So this is what we end up using as well as the beta hat in order to compute our T statistics, which is coming up. Linear regression is super flexible. Uh, there's a one sample t-test. You can do two sample t-tests, paired t-tests, ANOVAs, and COVAs, correlation analyses. I'll even show for very balanced, perfect, repeated measures ANOVA, you can use um, linear regression. Therefore, you can call it the general linear model because it generally just does everything. Oh, it's also a simple linear regression. Um, gives you an equivalent p-value to a Pearson correlation, but be careful. The beta is not a Pearson correlation, so be careful with your interpretation. That is it. Uh, we now have a modeling strategy. We know how to estimate the parameters, so we are on our way. Um, what's missing is p-values, so next time I'm going to step us through how we actually carry out our inference, uh, inferences on these things. Uh, yeah, p-values, we want some. So let's see, are you ready to move on? Let's see if you can answer these questions. Firstly, what is the matrix equation for estimating the beta vector? I think it'd be great if you could commit that to memory, especially if you ever think you're going to code anything on your own. How about the residual variance estimate? What was the equation for that? I guess that's it. Boy, so little required. Thanks for your time. Again, check the information box. I have the link there for the Facebook group. Please join if you haven't already. You can follow on Twitter. You can follow the Tumblr. Uh, do whatever you like. Again, I appreciate your attention and your, your involvement. Have a great day.